The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Bull Bear Binary Option Hour. Brought to you by Nadex. Call now. Toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Now, Tom and Tommy O'Brien. Welcome, folks. Tom and Tommy O'Brien. We're looking at all major indices positive to start off the program. Dow Jones positive by two points, straining at 24.748. NASDAQ positive by 11 points, straining at 69.47. And S&P is positive by two points, straining at 26.82. Good morning, Tom. What's happening? How you doing? What's going on, man? How's the morning going? It's going good. It's good. gorgeous out. It we're is. Not, you know, poor it's, Jim in Minneapolis. I mean, I, I know. Think I, I, right? I heard, yeah. yeah, like minus 29 degrees, right? Pretty remarkable, man. Beautiful in yeah. Florida. It is. Hopefully everyone stays warm across the country because, man, we got some cold temperatures ripping across that country for sure. And, you know, you know, it's a wild, and, and, and I was showing you this last night, Tommy, is that the natural gas folks, okay, you know, it finally caught a bid. It's up 2.7%. Uh, which is only seven cents, but it is absolutely amazing that it's still having such a tough time when the amount of gas that's getting exported has gone up dramatically. The the top news out here this morning was, let me see if I can just get it, uh, is that natural gas prices have never been this high in New England. They just doubled again overnight. Let me just see this. This is like crazy. It's like, you know, if you can figure out a way to bring natural gas, like for, here it is right here. Okay, so nothing like a cold spell to boost the nation's natural gas demand. Forecasts now indicate this week's outbreak. Oh, anyway, total U.S. Yeah, we're, we're reading it as you go through, so go ahead. Yep. <laughs> okay, so total U.S. natural gas consumption jumped 31% to 115.7 billion cubic feet from Tuesday, Tuesday, on Tuesday from Friday. That's the most ever for this time of the year. Not only have more homes converted to fuel from oil in Connecticut through Maine, the region's generators are also reliant on gas. Uh, so here it is. Gas for the next day delivery in New England at the Algonquin City Gate, wherever that is, <laughs> in New England, which includes Boston, is 35.35 per million British BTUs. Uh, on the Intercontinental Exchange. The last time gas rose that high was in uh, 2014 during the polar vortex. <laughs> Isn't that crazy? And then look at that chart you had up there. If you can just pause, I mean, that, that puts it in, into perspective in terms of, you know, paying 35 BTUs from, uh, uh, per looks like BTU. Like seven, yeah. And we were just at like 10, right? Yeah. <laughs> Let alone seven, right? That's crazy. Man. It is. Unreal. And if we go over to Bitcoin, okay, I heard you do the Bitcoin update. So this gets interesting. Yesterday we were talking about uh, XBT, XBT, XBT. That, um, you know, Paul from San Jose, he's always talking about how they love these FIB numbers. Now, the retracement was just over the 0.618, but still risk versus reward wasn't a bad deal. You just had to be up at 1 o'clock in the morning. <laughs> they, the... The point six one eight retracement was six sixteen thousand one ninety eight, and we went to sixteen thousand four ninety nine, and let's see how long we stayed there for. Okay, so yeah, we stayed there. We stayed there about an hour. We we hit. We start hitting it at uh, twenty minutes of twelve Eastern time, and then we gave it up at ten past two. Yeah, uh, and that's last night, 20, yeah. midnight till like 2 in the morning Eastern time. Right, yeah. right. Pretty cool, man. Oh, seriously. That's some volatility, yeah. man, for sure. It's definitely some volatility. When you look at, you know, we went from the whole span of it, when you even look at a week ago Sunday, so we're talking about 10 days ago now, I'm talking about Sunday, yeah. when you're really at those highs of almost 20,000 coming into the CME, having their futures product. Right. You go through that entire week, you hit almost 11,000 this previous Friday. Then you jump back up to above 16,000. Um, it's quite a roller coaster, man. It is, man. Yeah. It is. 
It seems like it's going to settle down in this range. Now, the range, the range seems like it's going to be, you know, maybe 16,000 to 11. <laughs> yeah. Range, right? oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> I, think, I think it's just still trying to find its range, to be yeah. fair. Um, yeah. There's nothing to say that it can't spike back up and, and exceed that high that we saw and spike to 25 and then pull back to 8. You know, I mean, it, it, it is. <laughs> Yeah, there is nothing. <laughs> yeah. There's no doubt about that. I know, right? And, of course, uh, this morning with uh, oil numbers. API is going to be coming out. Um, and oil caught quite a bit yesterday. It's giving it up a bit right now. Uh, we're down, uh, we're only down 23 cents. But uh, what we did get yesterday is that uh, this baby broke topside. So this is going to be interesting to see what they do with these numbers when they come out. You know? And, you know, so for holiday week, bottom line, it had volume. Do you know what time those numbers come out at with the holiday? Things get shifted. Um, that's us. Usually, that's right. When we have a that's holiday on right. Monday, I wasn't sure if you. No, you're not. Okay. So it's yeah. No, so, no you're right. Okay, hold on. What yeah. days? So you so were saying this, API, and then it's usually EIAs are usually Wednesday at 10:30. Yeah. They usually so are not be. that when we get a Monday holiday. No, it um, won't be. That's so, right. Yeah. No. That. Yeah. That's not going to be. We'll see happening. where it comes out, but sometimes they push it off to Thursday, and then usually what happens right. is we'll get Thursday. We'll have EIAs for oil and we'll have EIAs for natural gas somewhere in the morning. No, no doubt. Yeah. Now, if we go over to Apple folks, okay? Now, this is going to this is where you can just really learn a lot about bulls and bears fighting. Number one technically, but fundamentally also. So, what we have out here, Tom, is that first you had two firms in Hong Kong, right? Coming out saying uh as we came into the trading day yesterday, yes. that they heard that Apple suppliers uh, are not getting the orders for this iPhone 8, right? iPhone 10, rather. Yes. iPhone in general, let's put it that way. No, but it was the 10 that was the reports were coming okay. out. Yeah. Okay. So then you had, it started yesterday afternoon, Apple had to start getting this PR deal going, <laughs> which they did. Yes. And then they also had uh, major... Broker dealers, including Morgan Stanley in the United States, come out saying, "No, Apple's their best um, pick for 2018." Okay? okay. Now check this out. This is this is where it's going to be cool to see who wins this battle, folks. Because when you look at it, what has also happened is that Apple's largest supplier, which is Foxconn, right, just put on a hiring freeze. <laughs> okay. Okay. So. I saw that this morning. I said, you know what? That's telling me that the first two reports have better information than the next two. Sure. It, and we'll find out. Do you yeah. know what I mean? But yeah. guess what? If Fox, Foxconn put on a hiring freeze, that's telling you, you know, listen, there's, let me see if I can find this for you. Yeah, so you, you can see this one. The analyst says iPhone X order cut reports are incorrect. I mean, this is. Oh, yeah, no, like, there was a battle of headlines going on yesterday a little bit. This is, where, oh, this is a big battle. Yeah, and that's where, um, you know, it's not it's not that it's all speculation, but it's pretty close. You don't have really the company coming out with a material adjustment to, to anything going on. So this is kind of all the speculation that builds up to those types of earnings releases, right, um, yeah. in terms of just uh, trying to see through the lines in terms of what's going on with suppliers, what does that mean for iPhone 10 sales, what does that mean for the price of Apple, yeah, right, exactly. Let's see where it exactly. checks out. Well, and we had a question about why would they publish a hiring freeze? Well, what happens, folks, is that they have ads all over the world, and they're going to get thousands and thousands of people in. When they get a hiring freeze, they let everybody know. We're coming Larry right back. Larry Pesavento has just started his brand-new service, Fibonacci 24-7, and he's already delivering content to his subscribers on a daily basis when the market's opened and even on weekends. Each Monday, you'll receive Larry's written report that provides detailed commentary and a summary on the charts and videos that Larry sends out. And throughout the week, when warranted, Larry will send out via charts or videos or both the key markets that he is watching during the day this will be up to the date active trading information that will help you in your daily trading in Larry's first week alone he sent out 25 charts six videos and a full report to his subscribers in just one week if you're a technical trader that uses patterns and retracements to trade then Larry's service Fibonacci 24 7 is something that you must try right now new subscribers can get a full 30-day money-back guarantee with nothing to risk sign up now to Larry Pesavento's Fibonacci 24 7 by visiting the front page of tfnn.com under trading newsletters.
platinum, grains, crude oil, gold, copper, cattle, hogs, gasoline, natural gas, coffee, cotton, cocoa, and sugar. These are just some of the commodities mentioned in the most recent issue of Andy Hecht's Techno Mental Commodity Report. Andy publishes his weekly newsletter every Thursday morning where he breaks down the commodity market and provides his subscribers with specific trading recommendations based on his trading methodology. By signing up for a free trial to the Technomental Commodity Report, you'll get a full 30 days to try out this powerful newsletter service and see for yourself the types of trades Andy has recommended for his subscribers. When you sign up for a 30-day free trial, you're under no obligation to pay anything. And should you decide to continue, you will lock in the low rate of only $79 a month. Sign up right now for the Techno Mental Commodity Report and make sure you're ready to catch the next big trade in commodities. For more information and to get started today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. You know what's cool? Taking something that's good for you. Something specifically formulated to help with weight loss, better sleep, stress reduction, and the need to detox. Nico, our hunter and gatherer ancestors found all their nutritional requirements for health in their wild environment. But today, our food sources no longer contain the vitamins, minerals, and nutrients our bodies need to stay healthy and strong. That's why we need Primal Edge Daily Nutrition. It includes a special blend of ionic, soil-based vitamins, minerals, fatty, and amino acids in an easy-to-use liquid form. Primal Edge is powered by highly concentrated folic and humic acids, nature's preferred delivery system. They have been called miracle molecules because, like sunlight, air, and water, life cannot exist without them. That's right, Paige. They ensure we receive all the nutrition we need to be healthy and thrive. We, we take, take it, it every, every morning. morning. Primal Edge, formulated and approved by Nico and Paige of Living a Primal Lifestyle. Buy it today for just $89. Click on the Primal Edge banner on the front page of TFNN.com. We take your phone calls now. now. Toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Welcome back, everybody. Tom and Tommy O'Brien. All markets positive. We're coming into 2018 the way we've traded most of 2017, right? Dow up 5 points, yeah. S&P up 2, NASDAQ up 13. Um, we'll see where the day shakes out. So what else are you looking at this morning? Well, the you know, what you do have is this, okay? So if we go over, there's, there's a couple sectors that look to me like they're, they're perking up a bit. I mean, steel has been on the run. You know, you know, you get U.S. steel went from 25 to 35. Um, you know, for a slow week, this still got some pretty good, pretty good volume in it. Um, so I think that's going to be one that, you know, whether we get an infrastructure bill or not, it looks like steel wants to move. Um, you have the now what's really getting interesting here. Uh, we've been talking about this. We're talking about the copper market, right? So copper is at 328. FCX. Freeport Mac Moran, this thing is just on fire, man. Um, so this little bit, uh, F6. Right now you have this trading at 1883, and this has been a one-way shot. Uh, two and a half weeks ago, it was at $13. Um, this is a, a monster copper company. It's took out. It's took out its swing point from the 27th of January. So it looks like, hey, that thing's game up to 23. And then, you know, this is where it gets down into like, okay, the dollar index is still getting smoked. So this is where you have divergence, number one, DXH. And I think the reason that it's so important is that if this dollar keeps going lower, which looks like it's going to, that means we get a nice commodity market running. But it also means that interest rates are not going to be basically going where many of us think they should be going. Or not should. I, it's just that you know the Fed's saying they're going up. The 10-year the got smoked last week. The 30-year didn't. But it's like, man, if this, these, you know, like the dollar's down 227 ticks. You have volume in this today. You know, we have 8,000 contracts, man. You know, that's a lot of volume for a holiday week. So it's like we have the swing point of the 27th of November. That's game right now. That's a, 
that's only that's only that's uh, 300 ticks away. And then you get the major swing points from September 8th game. And if that's what we have, guess what? Those interest rates, uh, bottom line, are not going to be going up. And this is where you want to, you know, wrap your head around uh, the commodities, wrap your head around the interest rate structure itself. If we go, let's go over to that for a second. Look at this 30 year, unbelievable. So the 30 year is up 23 ticks. I mean, it's in the larger range. It never hit the lowest swing point. Yeah. So this is, you know, it's yeah, it, it's it's amazing actually. You know, I'm I'm psyched. Let me say, I don't <laughs> want the interest rates to go up, but it's like okay, the market has been up forever. They they expect that you know this year there's an article on Bloomberg this morning, Tommy, that they think uh, it's that one trillion dollars was basically made in the markets this year. You know, so. You're talking real bread, man. It's like, okay. And you can see it. I mean, the markets, right? They, 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 there's a one-way trade, you know, up in a huge way. So if that's what, the case. So were you I'm, looking at the article? Because I saw one about the world's wealthiest becoming $1 trillion richer in 2017. Oh, that was it. Yeah, that was it. Okay. okay. Yes. I think a lot. Yeah. It's probably a lot more than that. Then. That's yeah, what, that yeah world, it's, okay. that's literally yeah. just so, um, that's, you're talking about, it was either 67 no, 67. So the Bloomberg Billionaires Index had 67 billionaires join it in 2017. Oh, but I, I believe see. it's about 500, the world's 500 richest people added a trillion dollars alone. Oh, my God. I mean, yeah, markets went up 25 percent. You know, the, 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 the entire, just to put things in perspective, Apple alone is worth almost a trillion dollars. That stock is up what yeah. this year alone do you see i mean right. apple yes. shareholders yeah. alone almost made they made hundreds of billions of dollars so right. there was a lot more than a trillion dollars created for yeah. sure yeah um, big time so just jumping around on copper bloomberg had a nice article on copper as well you know because copper is kind of its own little thing i know we're talking about rates we're talking about the dollar yes. but copper's at, at three-year highs and you know you have a china plant out there halting output so there's kind of a perfect storm here going on you know part of right. what you talked about for sure but then just in the copper world alone you're talking about above seven thousand um per metric ton of copper yep. it's the first time it's hit there since all the way back to 2014 so three-year highs and then you have in there the production halt so you have copper's latest leg up follows news that Zhangji, maybe copper company yeah. china's yeah. largest producer had ordered to stop output for at least a week which is just an eternity right when you talk about a, a, a plant stopping a full week of production to further right. assess um pr local pollution levels um earlier this month the number two smelter uh was asked to make similar cuts so that's that's weighing dramatically in the price there as well and then you know as you go down further in this article there's more speculation about whether you know copper has legs to spike up to even maybe ten thousand dollars a ton or yep. kind of we hang around this level but pretty pretty remarkable run when you look at that chart from you know below five thousand towards the end of 2016 all the way up to above seven thousand as we end 2017. no there's no doubt yeah and you know what i like about that what does happen is that many times it's the base metals that will start first you get the base metals going, that's when you get a commodity run going. And the last big commodity run that we had, you know, was two, two years ago. Um, from 2015 to 2016, that was a decent run, you know. Not, not as big as in 2002, but it was still a good run. You know, like uh, we look at uh, the Valley, uh, which is, this is one of the largest, you know, just it's iron ore, it's gold, nickel, copper. They, they get just about everything inside of this. Um, and this baby here, you know, you're trading 12 bucks and you know this was off the low of uh yeah two dollars right yeah two dollars and 14 cents um it's it's pretty crazy like what these commodity stocks can do this this stock was 42 dollars in 2008 it was eight dollars in 2008 it was 36 dollars in 2011 and it was oh boy two dollars and 13 cents Seriously. in 2016. <laughs> quite a number man isn't it? Yeah. You know, and that's what commodity stocks do, though. It's like, wow. Man. Oh, yeah. You know, so, um, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll get to, uh, I think we get some action out here. It'd be interesting to see if this market can hold out here today. You know, yesterday, you get a sideways market. Um, 
no volume whatsoever, which you'd expect. I mean, you know, it's, this is a big holiday week. There's no doubt. Yesterday, you had 528 million shares on the NYSE. Uh, that's the same amount that we had uh, coming on Friday uh, going into the uh, Christmas holiday. You know, and folks, if you haven't test drove the, the Nadex platform, it's always a good time to do it. Um, uh, following Bitcoin, big number. Uh, all the, the quotes are free. You can hit the banner, bring it up, bring up the demo account, and uh, see how these babies trade. Because on Bitcoin, we have weekly binaries, I mean, weekly uh, spreads right now. You, you stay right there. Tommy and I are coming right back. We have the uh, Dow Industrials right now up 17. NASDAQ's up 16. S&Ps are up 2. Gold's trading up 240. Silver's up uh, 12 cents. Tommy and I are coming right back. Stay right there, folks. Today, it's hard to tell if the economy is coming or going. Regardless, I want my money going in the direction I choose. If that's your stance as well, then you want to know how EverBank can help keep your money thriving just the way you want. Is growing your money a priority? EverBank is committed to a yield pledge promise to pay high yields on your checking, money market, and CD balances. Looking to diversify? EverBank ingeniously developed accessible ways to spread your money around the world into foreign currencies and even non-FDIC insured metals. And when it comes to your wealth, they bring a highly experienced and global perspective to help you manage it. Everbank's financial philosophy flies in the face of the status quo. They believe your money's performance should not be determined by today's economic circumstances, but by the drive to rise above them and create opportunities that favor your objectives. If that excites you like it does me, call 1-855-750-4051 to find out what they can do for you. That's 1-855-750-4051. Call them today. Everbank bank is a member FDIC and equal housing lender. Hi folks, Tom O'Brien here. If you'd like to get my daily newsletter, Market Insights, then now is a great time to sign up for a 30-day free trial. Every morning by 9.30, I send out my morning letter to subscribers with market commentary on a variety of markets, currencies, and commodities to keep investors up to date on the day's trading action. Included in Market Insights are specific buy and sell recommendations for stocks, ETFs, and even options, with stops and price targets included for every trade in my newsletter. If you'd like to try my newsletter risk-free for 30 days, then head over to the front page of TFNN and you'll find Market Insights under Trading Newsletters. I use my years of trading experience to bisect and dissect the market every morning and give my subscribers the most important information they need to know for the day ahead. I even issue afternoon updates for my subscribers whenever warranted with important market action. I'm always scouring the market for the next great trading opportunity. Sign up for your 30-day free trial to my daily newsletter, Market Insights, today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Wow! Go get them, folks! Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. Tiger TV is an exciting way to experience TFNN programming, see high-definition video, giving you crystal clear charts, as well as seeing some of the faces of TFNN's highly acclaimed financial experts with crisp, full-fidelity sound. Catch Tom O'Brien, John Logan, Steve Rhodes, Basil Chapman, Larry Pesavento, Think or Swim, David White, Andy Hecht, and Daryl Martin in crystal clear, high-definition audio and video. Tiger TV, exclusively at TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, everybody. Tom and Tommy O'Brien. Markets hanging in the positive territory. Dow up 22. S&P is positive by 2. NASDAQ positive by 16. Yeah, so we'll see. It's already Wednesday, right? We sneak into yeah. the long weekend, Thursday, Friday. We'll see right. how, um, how these final two couple trading days kind of shape the end of 2017. Yeah, no doubt, man. You know, and it's almost like when I was doing the daily newsletter this morning, you know, I was looking saying, okay, 
it, it totally makes sense that we just have a sideways market. You know, people are off. People have done well. And I, as I start writing, I says, you know, you never can let your guard down. Sure, definitely, <laughs> right? You know, it's kind of like one of those deals. But I, I, realistically, I think that uh, that's what you're going to have. I think the, the, fire, the firepower here, Tom, and, and folks, it actually does look like it might, it might be Apple in the next few weeks. That's where, you know, because if you go over, if we go, well, watch, SWKS, if we go to a couple of their suppliers, this is one of the, the largest suppliers. You know, this stock just went from $117 on uh, November 6th, and you're trading 96. And you not only trading 96, though, it, it's banging into the swing point. It looks like it wants to break it. Um, you know, if that's the case, it's like, okay, you know, that thing wants to go lower. And if that's, you know, where we're going, then the NDX 100 will get a real correction, which, you know, bottom line, we haven't had. Um, you know, and Apple's capable of, of dragging the market lower. There's no doubt about it. And when we talk about where the aspect of how the different firms are fighting, that's what makes it so intriguing. It's like, wow, man, they're fighting for survival right now. Sure. You know what I mean? You know, like, okay, who are you going to believe? Because the stories are out this morning, too, folks. Tommy and I were just talking first, but then I just saw another one coming across. Uh, yeah, here it is. Okay, here's another one. Apple analyst months to plays down That's iPhone good. X sales. That's a video. You know what I mean? No, I like, saw, and I saw the one you were talking about as well, um, yeah. the headline creeping its way across the Bloomberg. Exactly. You exactly. can't help when you have, you know, the biggest company out there and oh. speculation flying about their flagship product. Um, oh, no doubt, man. Yeah. No doubt. And when you do bring this up, so watch what happens, folks. And, and Tommy's brought this up before when we, when we look at this screen. When you see this, I believe it's like 60% of their business, whereas... Oh, it might be even more. Yeah. Yeah. Here it is here. So iPhone is $141 billion out of yeah, two twenty nine. Yeah. yeah. Well, no, yeah, you're right. Yeah, 60%. 60 yeah. Right. Yeah. That's a number, man, right? That is that's, a number. That's a number. That is. You know, and, you know, like we were talking yesterday, you know, you got a new phone. I got Elliot phone. But the reality is I was actually confused myself as to what what's out there. What can you have? Do you know what I mean? Yeah. All right. Um, they haven't done a yeah. great job of differentiating what phone is the, the high-flying, you know, like you're saying. I think you got an 8. I got an 8. Right. You weren't even sure whether the 8 was the newest kit and everything. It's just um, they haven't launched in the way that I'm sure, as an Apple insider, that they would have liked to have launched that new Especially when you you figure that the iPhone 10, that's that's where the future is going in terms of the auto, you know, augmented reality, seeing your face, you know, and you can kind of add that into everything going on. Um, that's going to be. Oh yeah, it was supposed to be the big deal, right? right? right. Maybe it still will be, but right. the reality no. is that our perception is not exactly. That, you know what yeah. I mean? Um, and as we're talking, uh, let's go take a look at that gold market. So gold's catching another bid here. This is pretty cool because the dollar, folks. Just uh, just doesn't have it. So uh, we're up 410. Now you've done 139,000 contracts. That is really good contract volume. Also, for a holiday week, it's big contract volume. Yeah. Um, you know, yesterday yesterday we did 135,000 contracts. We've already done 139. You're coming into a swing point of 1303 to 1305. This gold market wants to go, man. Um, and then, um, you know, and this is going to be about the dollar. They're going to sell this dollar down. So. Yeah, and, you know, who knows? We might, it might be more normal than usual, usual coming into the long weekend, only because, you know, we work Friday, you have off Friday night, you have off Saturday, and then you come into New Year's Eve Sunday. So it's yes. not quite where you're rushing right into the holiday, where if New Year's Eve was falling on a Friday or a Saturday, there would be that trickle off where you're leaving work and and you know you're barely there for the final day whereas it, it kind of feels like there's you know a regular weekend in between you know you get the work week you get a weekend and then you get new year's eve no i re you know i didn't like how christmas fall you know what i mean because that's because christmas night is exactly. we need one more yeah but i like how new year's fell because right that's because what, new, new year's night is exactly. not a big deal versus new year's <laughs> right. eve right that's right yeah. you can sleep all day long yep <laughs> right totally uh, and it'll be interesting to see when we come back man the first time that somebody can pull the trigger on a cell um 
without worrying about taxes. So it'll be interesting to see how many people are, are kind of waiting with those orders to say, man, I, I, I really would want to sell my shares, all things being equal right now today. But guess what? All things aren't equal. And I'm going to wait until Tuesday as opposed to Friday because I gained an extra 12 months of cash flow, you know, in terms of before you have to pay those taxes. It's a real number. And so I wonder how many people are hanging, waiting um, to make that sell possibly. Oh, there's, there's no doubt, man. Yeah. There's, there's no doubt. In fact, there's, you know, it's interesting, folks, there's, there's a big story on the Bloomberg today, and, and they still have it up as number one now. And this is what it's about. Okay, so Leon Black, right, he is one of the biggest private equity firms, which is Apollo Management, right? Now, so I'll just go over this. So just, and the reason I want to go over this is that you can have very good writers, but if they don't understand technically how partnerships or corporations are set up, they have a problem. And this one here, I know has a problem, okay? So Leon Black recently posed a question was answered to determine how profitable the new U.S. tax regime could make Wall Street, Wall Street firms like Apollo Capital Management. Publicly traded cop, uh, partnerships such as Apollo are taxed differently than corporations, so should Apollo take advantage of uh, overall tax rules to pay less in taxes? Or should it use this chance to change to a Inc. To an Inc., right, from, yeah. from an LLC. From, from an LLC which would increase its tax bill but allow it to attract investments from mutual funds that have previously been out of reach. He says he was still analyzing that uh, black told Goldman Sachs a U.S. Financial Service Conference on December 6th. Either way, it's most likely the money managers, uh, it, it's m most likely a money-making outcome. The tax changes are a boom for private equity firms such as Apollo, where Black is chief executive officer. The new lower cop corporate rate has made it possible for bigger publicly traded partners to consider the change. As it is, management fees, which typically account for 30% or more of their earnings, are already taxed at a corporate rate. The legislature scarcely touched the 23.8% rate paid on incentive fees, also carried, called carried interest, which incur no additional levy when paid out to shareholders. If partnerships converted to corporations, the incentive fee would be hit with the second layer of tax when they're paid out. That would push the combined tax rate on an incentive income paid out as dividends to nearly 40%. Okay. Uh, but it would also allow the newly limited corporations access to indices. Okay, I'll, we'll get back to this for a second. That if, if I cut to the... Yeah, we'll get back to this. Okay. I'll explain what the, what, the, what the cut to the chase is. Stay right there, folks. Tommy and I are coming right back. We have the Dow Industrials right now up 27. NASDAQ's up 14, S&P's are up 2.5. We're coming right back. Has the current market volatility continued to stop you out of trades when the market spikes against you? Now is the perfect time to open up an account with Nadex. Nadex, the North American Derivatives Exchange, is a brand new, completely regulated Chicago-based exchange, and unlike most other exchanges, Nadex allows you to trade directly through them with direct market access when using their completely free trading platform, which also features real-time charts and full customization capability. One of the advantages of trading with Nadex in volatile markets is that your risk is always capped and you have the ability of keeping your trades open even when the market spikes against you. Nadex is completely completely brand new with a line of unique trading products that are unavailable anywhere else. See how it works at nadex.com. That's N-A-D-E-X.com. Or click on the Nadex banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Futures and options trading involves risk and may not be appropriate for all investors. Tom O'Brien's weekly gold letter, The Gold Report, gives complete and concise coverage of the entire gold market. Inside, you'll get Tom's commentary on gold, the dollar, the rand, the bond, the XAU, the HUI, and detailed coverage of nearly 25 mining stocks. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stock price of each stock trade. The Gold Report is a long-term newsletter where the focus is on building real wealth through the management of a successful portfolio of gold stocks. With a lifetime of knowledge and almost 12 years of writing his informative weekly newsletter, The Gold Report, Tom O'Brien can provide you with the important market information to help you make better trades in the gold market. 
Don't let the next bull run in gold pass you by. To get a month-long free trial to the Gold Report, an $85 value, visit the front page of TFNN.com today. David White's newsletter, The Technology Insider, is focused like a laser on finding the next big things in technology. If you had invested only $10,000 in Microsoft in 1986, you'd have been a millionaire by 2000. Disruptive technology like Microsoft's is the key to these massive long-term profits, and The Tech Insider is the vehicle from TFNN to capitalize on these opportunities. This is the go-to newsletter that identifies, monitors, and profits on mostly little-known cutting-edge companies with great long-term prospects. David's experience is as an inventor of Emmy-winning animation products for TV and Hollywood that propelled a company public. Match that with 14 years as a full-time trader, and he's uniquely qualified to guide you through the light-speed world of ever-evolving high-tech. If you're ready to ride the next big technology bull market for less than $40 per month, log on to TFNN.com and get your two-week free trial to the Technology Insider. Get in on the ground floor of the next big thing today. Don't forget you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. <laughs> Welcome back, folks. Tom and Tommy O'Brien. Markets just hanging at those levels. Dow positive by 20. S&P is positive by 3. NASDAQ positive by 15. So go ahead, Tommy. You were talking about the kind of the changes so, in these funds. Yeah. So the part that they missed here, all these partnerships, right? This is, this is how this works in a partnership. So Leon Black, this is one of the biggest, you know, private equity funds that are out there, right? Apollo Capital Management. Global, global Management, yep. That's right. So you have a partnership agreement. That's a public company. That's a partnership agreement. Well, what ends up happening, now you have the manager of the partnership. The manager of the partnership, which happens to be him, is what? It's not Leon Black. It is another LLC that would be, that is going to be another name that's going to be the manager of that partnership, which is a pass-through. And then you're going to have Leon Black. Because what ends up happening is that that's just how they're all structured. You know, you have, you have the partnership, you have the manager of the partnership who happens to be an LLC, then, and that's set up basically because it's always been a, that would be set up for lawyers, you know what I'm saying? So everyone's protected basically, yes. okay? Now what has happened though is this, the pass through is only, you know, is the best way to have all of this, right? So it's like, they're not gonna change this structure, you know? at all because the pass-through has the best tax implications right now so when you look at that that you know the bottom line is that they're talking about making it a C corporation versus leaving it it is um, and what they didn't have in here and it's it's gonna be intriguing my, my point is is that you'll see folks the pass-through in every company is going to be where it's at and on these large companies, you're going to have multiple layers, and they're going to all end up being a pass-through, because it just totally makes sense. It, it's, and it's not expensive. Do you know what I'm saying? It's not, you have to file, you have a separate LLC that you're going to file, but that's how these are going to be, well, that's how this is set up. I know that's this is how the big firms, that's how most of them are set up already. So it's going to be intriguing watching, you know, no one's going to be a C corporation uh, no one's going to change to a C corporation. Let's put it that way. You know why? You know because you have the same um, protections. Meaning, you know, if you, you get, like, I'm, you know, whether it's liability. Do you know what I'm saying? You have the same protections as a as a C corporation. You can't write off as much, but um, it's going to, you know, these pass throughs are going to be where it's at. That's the bottom line. And inside the financial business, they're all pass throughs. So. What it, what it does say in that article, though, right, the reason why is because then they could be included in some of the index fund type funds. Yes, right. right. No, Just to, that's, that's to get right. back to it. Right. That we, for the, the large index funds don't want to... Pri private partnerships. Yeah, right. So... Right. right. It, it, 
So who's going to go first? Yeah, no, no. I'm waiting, cause the, we just didn't I, what, quite get to the whole end of the article before. That's that's right, because what they have in there, folks, is just, that what he's saying is that if the first one that does it, if their stock price goes up, that makes a difference, right? That's that's what it comes down to. Well, if yeah, you could have you know billions of dollars flying into your fund, and then you know, and what happened was that you know part of it is the the corporate rate got lowered, so there, there was there was a lot in in there. Right, it got it got lowered, but what it, what does it happen? And this is what happens is that then you got to pay tax on your dividend, you know. So you, where where a pass through is your money, you know. You only pay the tax once. A corporation is that you're going to pay the corporate tax, which is what 21 percent now. Then you got to pay your own tax on top of it as you take money out of it. So it's going to be a brave new world out here. Yeah. Yeah, big time. Let's go take a look uh, inside the Dow and see what uh, what the movers are out here. So, point wise, out here today, Big Mac, Big Mac's putting seven positive points. Johnson Johnson's putting six. Home Depot's putting five. Taken away from it, Goldman six negative. Nike five negative. Apple three. Inside the NDX 100. Let's see. So the leader out here is Amaz is up 1.3 percent. Align Technologies up 1.3, taken away from it. Oh, look at this. This is an Apple supply. Oh, no, that's a Liberty. Liberty Financial down one. Uh, down. Oh, it's all the, uh, it's Liberty down 1.5%. O'Reilly Automotive down 9 tenths of 1%. Let's go see what the uh, automobile business is doing. You know, yesterday I was reading the, uh, it's not bad, I guess. You know, this is down from 291, but Amazon's not doing a number on them yet. If we go take a look at Amazon, you know what I had yesterday? Uh, this is this was intriguing. This is something I was never thinking about. Um, they said that Amazon was going to get in, like, just the over-the-drug uh, market also. You know what I mean? Like, like regular things that we just buy at the drugstore. Okay. <laughs> it would make sense, right? But oh. that's like... That was, like, when I read it, I said, oh, you, that's, that's wild, man. So they're going to make that like the uh, pantry packs, folks. If sure. You get a pantry no, pack. Everything <laughs> is on their plate, man, right? It really it is. It is. Yeah. It is. Oh, man, I'm telling you, when I read that, though, I says, what what happens with, could you imagine, like, a bear aspirin or a, what? A, sure. A Tylenol? Yeah. And if you just, they, they have Amazon aspirins, right? It's like... Yeah. Oh, well, you know, they have CVS branded everything when you're in those stores. Um, yeah. There's no reason, exactly. No, there, there is no reason, you know. There were stories it's... yesterday talking about Amazon getting in more into the online advertising arena, too. Did you see those yeah, articles? Yeah, I there? heard you say that on the update, man. Yeah. And that would just yep. make sense just because there's such a, you know, consumer retail giant in terms of having that type of users on their site, that type of data on what people yes. are doing. Um, they already have the business, right? right, they, right. They, you know, let, let's say you're a company. I call you up and say, hey, listen, man, you know, why are you advertising with Google? Every single time something comes on Amazon, I'll, I'll pop your sticker up right in front of them. Right, and it seems yeah. like some of the bigger advertisers, part of the article that was talking about yesterday, Amazon seems to be a little bit inclined to offer up a little bit more information about those clients, yeah, and um, especially if you're coming in as a huge advertiser, you know, you're talking about a big publicly traded company. Um, right. And so those types of companies are searching for an alternative to the Facebook and the Google, um, you know, duopoly yeah. that they have controlling the online advertising market. Yeah. Well, Amazon sees big pies of money, man, and they go after them in the online advertising business being controlled by two giants when Amazon, that seems like something they could dig their teeth into. You know what's amazing? Like, how do you run something that big, right? And he seems to do such a great job. It's yeah, like, no, it's I'd, just... I'd say it's, you know, the people you have. You gotta, you gotta put your trust in people to let go of, you know, certain yeah. duties and, and, you know, um, responsibilities. Because, yeah, I, I you know, the, yeah. The, those people the, have severe responsibilities that ooh. fall solely on their shoulders and then Bezos yeah. gets the update every whatever it is, right? Week, month, and yeah. Intense. It is.
Stay right there, folks. Tommy and I are coming right back. We have the Dow Industrials up 31, Nasdaq's up 17, S&Ps are up 3, Gold's up 390, Silver's up 15 cents. Silver just got back inside the higher range, folks. We're at 1676. 1665 is the number. Come right back. Are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD, Directions Daily CSI 300 China A share bull and bear ETFs. China A shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Hi, I'm Steve Rhodes, host of the Trader's Edge here daily at TFNN.com and author of Mastering Probability, a daily investment and trading newsletter service that I send out each morning by 8 a.m. My morning newsletter service covers exactly what the markets have been doing since last night's close, providing you with an edge on your trading day ahead. You get actionable trading ideas, including the exact entry, stop, and profit targets. Plus, I'll teach you the patterns and hidden market correlations that will make you a better trader. As a subscriber, you'll gain access to my 90-minute money management workshop, where I'll teach you the secrets that'll save your assets. The bottom line, I've got your back, including a 30-day money-back guarantee. See for yourself the type of analysis I provide each trading day by signing up for Mastering Probability today. With nothing to lose, this is an offer you should not pass on. Mastering Probability can be found under trading newsletters on the front page of TFNM.com. TFNN has put together the finest programming lineup each trading day, featuring some of the most knowledgeable and respected financial minds in the nation to educate traders and investors. On Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays, we broadcast eight hours a day starting at 9 a.m. as Larry Pesavento kicks us off with Trade What You See. Tuesdays and Thursdays, we broadcast 11 hours. Get an early and healthy start to your day as Nico and Paige bring you Living a Primal Lifestyle. Then catch Andy Hecht at 5 p.m. with the Commodities Hour following the Tom O'Brien Show. Swim Lessons from TD Ameritrade Think or Swim is now at 11 a.m. Followed by Basil Chapman at 12 noon. See the TFNN program lineup via the link on the front page of TFNN.com to get a complete overview of our TFNN shows and hosts. And keep TFNN's Tiger TV tuned in on your mobile device, PC, or Mac for the latest financial news and information throughout the broadcasting day. TFNN.com. Educating investors. Learn how to trade options with Swim Lessons. Brought to you by TD Ameritrade. Think or Swim. Next on TFNN. <laughs> Welcome back, everybody. Tom and Tommy O'Brien. Still those markets, a little bit higher from where we started the show, yeah. getting a little bit of a bid, right? Dow up 35, NASDAQ up 18 now, S&P's almost up 5. Um, they're creeping. They're, they're creeping. creeping. They've been creeping all hour. They have. We'll see if they can creep into 2018. Um, we will see, man. We got two full trading days, right? Dow 25,000 yes. knocking on the door, only 200 points away from it, practically. Uh, oh, we'll man. Mazel hit it. Let me right? see that. Because, yeah. man, it, it might face a little bit of headwind once you get into 2018. I mean, you got tax cuts already done. That's built in. you got huge gains, 20 25% in the market, let alone if you're a holder of Apple, Netflix, Amazon. You're talking about, right. you know, I, I saw the number somewhere. It's staggering, man, those companies. You're talking about 35 40 45 50% on a yearly basis. Um, pretty, pretty remarkable. We'll see where the beginning of 2018 shapes up. Well, I think... Uh, just for our uh, man, Mr. Basil Chapman, Dow's got to get to 25,000 for that even number, man. Make it happen. But wouldn't that be really cool if it just closed right at 25,000 on the nose? Hey, anything's <laughs> possible, man. There's going to be oh. a number it closes on. It's Yeah, there's no doubt. Man. Right? Hey. 
and we're right in that ballpark. So let's yeah. check in on the cryptocurrencies as we wrap it up, all right? So Bitcoin, yeah. 15,273. We were down at about 15, 1, 15,085 seems to be the low at about 10 a.m. when we started about 200 higher. But jumping over, we'll check in on some of the other cryptocurrencies. You got Ethereum out there, 734. Bitcoin Cash, 2716. Litecoin, 266. Let's take a look at Litecoin because that seems to be the one that had a little bit of a dive since, yeah. So in the overnight session, we're up at about 280. 86 from there dipping down to about 266 seems like small numbers $20 but man 286 you're talking about 8% decline not bad wild wild folks you stay right there we got swim lessons coming up next and we got uh, I'm Mr. Basil Chapman Steve Rhodes Dave White I'll be back this afternoon have a great one have a safe one thanks Tommy thanks man Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com.